Uh, hello, friends. It is uh, 24th day of war. I am now in a little bit other place um, and um, I had some not long but small trip and during the trip I had conversations with people who are evacuated from Chernihiv, from Bucha, from that terrible destroyed regions in Ukraine and uh, I understood how much pain and uh, what kind of uh, uh, stress that people received. Um, I was in not best conditions uh, and uh, who watch um, my videos uh, uh, that people, those people know that um, I, I slept on, you know, an underground shelter in Colts uh, and I moved to Kiev. Uh, unfortunately, in Kiev uh, today, uh, it's huge smoke. Uh, the air there is really very heavy, it is hard to breathe, uh, and, and uh, some of people say that it's because uh, in uh, Novi Petrivci, it is near Kiev, a huge landfill, it is burns because of the fights. Others say that it is because uh, uh, on the um, one of directions where there was a lot of swamps and a lot of such a kind of land uh, called uh, tarf uh, or peat, I don't know how how call it, but uh, it is uh, uh, very you know, may uh, very good uh, burn for days. But anyway, because of that smoke in Kiev inside, it's really heavy to breathe, heavy air, and uh, it is hard to breathe, and so people. Uh, should say stay stay home uh, stay that places where they uh, stopped uh, and uh, there's recommendation do not open the windows uh, uh, because uh, because of this smoke because of the smell uh, that something burns uh, yesterday also in kiev um, was uh, bombardments as usual and uh, was uh, destroyed uh, one of the um, buildings there, uh, so it is like nothing new, unfortunately. Uh, what else? I know that our army stopped, as I told you, Russians in most directions. Now, um, the most hot fights are near Donbass, uh, because uh, Russians try to enlarge this territory of uh, so-called uh, Donetsk and Luhansk People's Republics. They try to capture Mariupol, also small towns around Volnovakha, Popasna. Uh, so there is now, uh, there are uh, huge uh, uh, battles, fights, and um, um, so it is uh, hard times for people who are stayed there. Uh, I must uh, pay uh, attention and uh, say the best words to uh, Azov. It is a military unit of Ukrainian army and it, it def defends uh, Mariupol still. As you know, Mariupol is surrounded by Russian army and Azov inside, uh, they uh, fight, uh, still fighting. Uh, they uh, do not let Russians to get inside Mariupol and it is even surrounded by huge numbers of Russians. It is still Ukrainian city. So uh, they are truly heroes and actually they are waiting for help, for help outside uh, of Ukrainian army. But uh, still they, um, w uh, while the Ukrainian army try to uh, destroy this uh, surround uh, that they were surrounded by Russians. They try to, uh, you know, uh, uh, eliminate this, and um, so they they waiting for help. Uh, this Azov inside Mariupol, and um, they are truly heroes. And people uh, inside they, I think they are suffering a lot. Um, as I know, they. Uh, all live uh, underground mostly uh, in some shelters. Uh, they gather, uh, gather. Uh, they make gathering and together on the open fire in their yards. They are cooking the some food, uh, what everyone got. So uh, today they do not have, you know, like um, 
some private property. They all joined together and they share food. They uh, made it on the open fire in the yards uh, and they try to survive and wait for Ukrainian army, wait to, um, to be freed from this disaster from Russians. I know that in Kherson region and in the Melitopol region, Berdansk re uh, sorry, region, cities and towns, uh, also people, they do not um, uh, left uh, uh, this um, hope that uh, Ukrainian army will free them. They don't want to be a part of Russian world. And uh, as you know, maybe before in uh, Mel Melitopol, sorry, wait a second. I, I should should stop one thing. Well, in Melitopol, um, Russians they kidna kidnapped uh, and in Skadovsk also they kidnapped uh, uh, the head of the city and uh, they uh, kept him in the government building for six or seven days. He, uh, he spent uh, also um, like in the prison there, you know, it's like temporary uh, police department uh, uh, and some um, small prison or something near. And uh, they kept him there uh, for, for a week almost. And um, what was their demands? And now they freed him. And uh, he gave interview. He uh, told what was the demands of Russians. And uh, the, their demands, uh, they wanted him to uh, came out, uh, come out on the square, uh, you know, um, uh, to that people that are with Ukrainian flags on the meeting and they are for Ukraine. Um, and the uh, Russians wanted to, this head of this city told them that uh, people, uh, you know, what kind of situation uh, now we will uh, live in, uh, you know, in uh, as a part of Russia. So uh, this um, mentality of Russians that uh, they think that if the head of the city will come to people who are against Russia and if this head will say that uh, people, sorry, uh, we will be a part of Russia now and like uh, Russians think that after this world words people will you know will follow him and will you know burn the ukrainian flags and uh, <laughs> will accept this um, and this kind of mentality uh it is completely completely uh, different to ukrainian and russians they do not understand the situation in ukraine uh, that because it doesn't matter it's not um uh, the head of the city who decided it's not the president who decided uh, we don't have leader you know ukrainians don't have leaders yes we have heroes we have leaders but anyway it is will of the people and uh, if um, even that uh, head of the city of melitopol will be killed um this this um, thing uh, won't uh, stop uh, Ukrainian uh, Ukrainian uh, citizens of Mariupol, and it won't change my, their mind. Actually, they will be more aggressive to Russians even than before. Uh, so uh, Russians they do not understand. They are searching for leaders who will uh, ensure people who will uh, make them think that they should be a part of Russia. But Ukrainians do not have leaders. Mm, actually, it is democracy. Uh, it is the uh, will of majority. And actually, it is doesn't matter what kind of leader we will have. Um, uh, this leader should uh, speak from the people. Uh, he should, you know, uh, show and uh, uh, execute people's will. And uh, people do not want Russia here. Mm, so uh, they should uh, put uh, as a leader there like one by one Ukrainians and they will say the same. Of course, there could be few betrayers as everywhere, but uh, Russians, they do not understand this. They, mm, they have a completely different type of, you know, society that uh, follows leaders and do not have uh, own opinion, own will. 
maybe if they have they uh, try to not show this you know uh, actually uh, not all people but uh, the majority of people and uh, what about um, situation also near Kiev um, I know that uh, a couple of huge columns are on the way to closer to Kiev uh, Russian columns and also they um, uh, built some uh, it's like floating bridge, or I don't know how it calls, uh, across the river Pripyat. It is in Chernihiv region near Chernobyl. So uh, also I know that Putin tried to concentrate um, army near, uh, near Kiev. Uh, he transferring uh, soldiers and machinery from the central uh, Russia, from the uh, eastern Russia, um, that... Uh, uh, armies and uh, military units closer to Ukraine. So he uh, these sanctions, they all, this all limits and uh, um, like economical wars uh, do not influence still on his opinion, and he want to try to um, accumulate here near Kiev as much as uh, as many as possible soldiers. The quality of this soldiers they they maybe they train it not enough uh, so it is low but uh, he want to, to uh, you know use uh, that the the number of the soldiers are huge and uh, till this day in ukraine also um, was uh, start start uh, to create uh, um, even camp, military camps, like, I don't know it, how, how it calls, camp, prisons uh, um, for uh, camp imprisoned uh, Russian soldiers, uh, because it is huge number of them, and we just do not have where to keep them, so that's why uh, the, he will be military camps for imprisoned uh, Russian soldiers. Uh, we have a lot of soldiers already killed, uh, it's more than um, 14,000. Uh, I know that in Western uh, mass media this uh, number is lower, but they count only by uh, some machinery units uh, and they count what, uh, how many people was inside. But our, um, our uh, specialists, they count also, you know, uh, soldiers without any machinery so, so that's why here number more like high higher than than in the western mass media uh, also um, they as i told you uh, today russians they tried to attack on on the uh, mariupol also in that uh, donetsk region the bas region uh, and on the way to Kharkiv, uh, there is uh, there are hot military actions and accumulate forces near Kiev to try to um, actually capture it. Uh, so sanctions they do not work, as I told you. Uh, they also um, try to destroy Western Ukrainian cities. Uh, in Western Ukrainian cities, there is no huge fights, but. Uh, uh, the missiles they strike and they destroy uh, from time to time here some objects of in infrastructure um, and also I want to tell you about about such a thing that uh, we have uh, two types of orthodox church um, one uh, type is um, belongs to like Kiev um, I don't know how it call uh, we call it part patriarchat it means like it's like um, the main Pope or something uh, are in Kiev, and uh, another part it is uh, Moscow Patriarchate. It is uh, it means that Ukrainian churches and their uh, main you know like they had um, in uh, that Kirill you know it is uh, in the Moscow, and uh, sometimes uh, or even always uh, this um, uh, Moscow Patriarchate helps uh, to uh, conquer Ukraine. I know that, uh, and you know maybe, that church should be uh, not involved in any conflict, uh, in, in politics, in something like this. Church is something that uh, should help uh, everyone and uh, stay, you know, neutral, but not, in, in, not now, not in Ukraine. And Russian churches, they 
involved in this politics, in these conflicts, and actually they even, um, uh, like, how to say, <laughs> wet by um, holy water, the Russian uh, weapon uh, before Ukrainian invasion. We have such uh, videos even, so what kind of priests they have, I don't know if they should uh, be called like a servant of God. If uh, they um, put holy water on the weapon uh, and weapon then kill civilian people, uh, kids and something like this. And uh, today uh, in Western Ukraine, uh, simple people, they um they got an information that one of the church of uh, moscow patriarchate they inside keep some storages for um, russian soldiers and they opened it and there was inside like um, prepared prepared food for soldiers and uh, there was uh, it was uh, definitely for for army not for people and even some weapon inside the church. So you, you, what kind of church they have, you should understand. And we have this, uh, it is huge, uh, huge uh, church. Uh, I mean, that they have uh, buildings, they have the church uh, uh, all over the Ukraine and in Western Ukraine. And now they even use them, you know, as a, uh, some um, points or uh, some uh, places uh, for based their um, for for uh, storages their food or something, and um, it is uh, un unbelievably you know unpleasant because they even use church and uh, this uh, all thing that connected with God against Ukraine against peace, uh, unfortunately. Uh, so that is the new uh, that is kind of what uh, I also I want to tell you about uh, that thing that uh, Ukrainian army they try to destroy the uh, places uh, the, that places where the generals colonels colonels of Russian army are sit um, sitting and um, so uh, for now, they our army destroyed almost four or five generals of Russian army, and uh, four maybe or three colonels. It is like the best um, best uh, colonels and generals of Russian army. So uh, it is unbelievably because everyone says that it is very hard to kill general or colonel because they are not actually. Uh, uh, on the, you know, that first line under fire, uh, they usually uh, manage uh, what to do and they sitting, you know, uh, somewhere uh, not close to that fight, but a little bit far deeper. But anyway, our, um, our bombers and our uh, other machineries, they try to destroy uh, that... Uh, uh, that uh, machinery that uh, not on the first line but after it to destroy um, cars with fuel ch uh, kernels uh, that uh, you know um, cars for military cars for for generals kernels for uh, to destroy the logistics uh, to destroy this uh, uh, to uh, prevent uh, you know this uh, like um, line uh, to to make war to <laughs> stop um, feeding and uh, um, delay de uh, fuel delivery to to the uh, for tanks for that uh, first line and uh, so uh, our army uh, try to um, act I think more wisely and uh, unfortunately Russian army they have a huge number of soldiers. And uh, I know for today, uh, there um, for one uh, Ukrainian soldiers, we have uh, ten uh, killed Russian soldiers. So it is numbers one to ten. It is huge losses for Russian army, but they um, try to uh, um, to like make more numerous their army, and they do not have any mercy, uh, any. Um, anything to their uh, people, to their uh, soldiers, they use them and uh, our army kills them and actually in Russia 
no one cares. Uh, so uh, actually people from Bucha I talked to, they uh, said that all these days uh, they were without uh, food, without uh, electricity, light, uh, they cannot uh, make a phone uh, to their relatives uh, and they they said that uh, there is Russian uh, soldiers of Russian corps, they everywhere and no one takes them back. Mm, some uh, part of these corps are in the Belarus, Belarusian morgues uh, and they just, uh, you know, uh, they just uh, stay there even sometimes without freezing, so they just, uh, you know, how to say, um, uh, th th there is like a biologically uh, dis destroy uh, these bodies they, by themselves uh, and Russians, they do not want to take them back because uh, if the mothers of the soldiers and such a number of mothers will know that their children already died, uh, there will be a huge... Uh, a uh, huge protest inside of Russian society, especially that mothers and relatives who understood that uh, that huge number of uh, soldiers already died. So uh, Russian, Russians, the Russian army, they tried to not uh, take back their soldiers. They just lie on the on the uh, Ukrainian lands, or they. Um, are in the Belarusian morgues uh, everywhere and sometimes they even have a mobile uh, special uh, special thing to burn the corpse of their own soldiers um, in their vehicles uh, I got that information also uh, so um, Putin just use uh, their uh, own people and um, he created this um, uh, opinion in mass media. He make uh, Rus Russians love him, admire him, how how uh, wise he is, how cool he is, how scary he is. But instead of this, uh, he do not respect his people, uh, and uh, he just use his the uh, young soldiers, and they die and he even do not want to uh, take them back and bury with the honor they just uh, are on the dead on the ukrainian lands and even uh you know this uh, stray dogs eat sometimes their their uh, bodies and um, so putin do not respect his uh, nation his uh, people uh, and uh, uh, it is amazing uh, why Russians still love him and, uh, you know, think that he's a uh, great leader. I think that is the most uh, uh, big difference between Ukrainians and Russians. Uh, that is because Ukrainians, they try to uh, respect everyone, try to respect people, and we do not care about what kind of leader will be, uh, what kind of president will be, um, the main goal for this president to execute uh, will of the people uh, to um, make that step make the steps that people want that people will accept or um, explain people why he did that um, so uh, people here in Ukraine it is very something it is really important a life of every person and uh, people will not accept in Ukraine such attitude uh, to be, you know, uh, eaten by stray dogs on the some uh, some other country and uh, in, in some other country. And in Russia it is normal. They do not need, you know, good uh, uh, fresh food, uh, good conditions and they die like uh, almost like a dogs unfortunately and they still like uh, love uh, their leader um, I don't know it is not normal uh, at least for Ukrainians um, for us we, we cannot accept this we cannot understand this also I want to show you <laughs> my cats uh, because I want to end my video now and I know some of of you asked about what uh, happened to my cats uh, are they all right uh, 
Uh, you see they are sleeping here peacefully. It is uh, Molly. <laughs> and uh, and it is uh, uh, Lalita. <laughs> you see? So I... Uh, I try to not laugh to them. They should be rescued uh, because not just people are important in Ukraine, but their pets. Uh, there is a lot of volunteers who try to help uh, pets. Uh, some of people left uh, their pets because um, they should uh, evacuate only with uh, documents. Uh, I, and they uh, didn't uh, had have possibility to take pets, and there is a lot of volunteers. There are there are a lot of volunteers to help um, this uh, such a beautiful, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful pets like this Lalita, like Molly, and two others. They uh, they not here. So thank you for watching. I hope um, my video was useful and uh, you uh, got some interesting information um, while watching it. Uh, thank you uh, very much and see you in next video. Bye.